What's the hardest position to play in 2K? Now as all of us know, in any 2K game there has always been three main positions. Guard, lock, and center. But what's the most difficult? Well this question should be easy. Obviously the guard. But wait, why you may ask? Well just like the last question, this one is also fairly straightforward. So let's start off with shot rate. Who on the court shoots the most? The point guard. Next being ball time. Who has the game in their hands the most? The guard. And finally, who makes the IQ slash passing plays? Once again, the guard. Now you may say, Len, if being a guard is so hard, why even make one? Well, if y'all are part of No Limit Gang, y'all know that I'll make playing guard the easiest position for you to play. Now this is common sense. If you want to be one of the best, you gotta have one of the most overpowered guards in the game. And yes, if your guard cannot dunk this year, you might as well just unplug the game and go to sleep. But for the people that are willing to get better, I got y'all. Let's get into this build, man. So for the position, you obviously want to go with a point guard. That's the whole point of the video. And in my opinion, left-handed players are much better than right. But it's y'all choice. Y'all can pick what you want. But let's press continue. Now for the most important aspect of this player is the height. Now I went with a 6'2". Y'all can also go with that, or y'all can either go with a 6'1 or a 6 foot. For my player, I went with 6'2. For the weight, you just want to drop that down as low as possible. We do not need none of that. Now, for my player, I went with a 6'2 wingspan. It depends on what height y'all put. You just need to look up in the top right at driving dunk and make sure your driving dunk is at an 86. So if you went with a 6'1, you have to have a 6'4 wingspan. And if you went with a 6 foot, you have to have a 6 foot 5 wingspan. But like I said, I went with a 6'2 wingspan, 6'2 as well. Weight, lowest as possible. And you know for my body shape, I always go with the skinniest. I love my pair looking skinny paw. Now for the best part, our attributes. So let's start off with our finishing. For our close shot, you just want to go with a 53. We're not going to use this a lot. All of us 2K players know that we never use close shot. For our driving layup, you just want to go with a 76. And then like I said before, driving dunk 86 so we get contacts. Then we leave our standing dunk alone, post control alone, and let's move on to shooting. So for our mid-range, you want to go with a 78 mid-range. And then for our three-pointer, you want to go with a 92, so we unlock limitless range gold. For our free throw, you just want to put that to a 78 as well. So for our pass accuracy, so we can unlock the fast passes, you just want to go with a 70 pass accuracy. Now, a lot of y'all know me, I do not like to pass the ball, so that wasn't a huge aspect of my player being the reason why it's at a 70. For our ball handle, I went with a 94, just so I could get handles for days gold. And then our speed with ball, you want to go with a 93. Now our defense, y'all know, I do not play defense. Every time I play, I have the best lockdowns on my team. I just stand in the corner on defense, it does not matter. You just want to put this to a 54. Now for our speed, leave it at an 83. And this year, acceleration really matters a lot about your speed boost. So the higher acceleration, the faster our speed boost. So I just put it to a calm 95, super fast, super quick. Stamina, you just want to max that out 99, and that's the build right there. We get 16 finishing, 24 shooting, 25 playmaking, 2 defense, because we're not going to use that. One thing I want to talk about as well is our vertical. 66 vertical, y'all are going to be like, Glenn, you can't get contacts. Yes, you can. This is current gen. Vertical only matters in next gen. So let's press continue. So this is how I would move my take. Overs, I would have shot creating as my primary take and slashing as my secondary take. Y'all know I like to fade a lot. I'm gonna be teaching y'all that throughout the whole video as well. And slashing just because when I have to take it to the rim, it's a wide open dunk every single time. And let's press finish. Now, if you didn't get the build three point shot creator, you made some dookie. Let's move on. Now, as all of us know, you need to have a jumper to be an elite guard. Let's look at some of the best, like Curry, Kyrie, Steve Nash, all guards that can shoot the ball at any time. Now, being a 2K player and looking for a jump shot as a guard, you not only want something that can green consistently, you also need something very, very quick so defenders cannot close out. The first jump shot we have here is a mix of the both. To me, it's a 3.5 in speed and a 5 out of 5 in greenness. For the base, we're going to go with LaMelo Ball. The reason why I choose this base is for the simple fact that it has one of the highest green windows in 2K right now. Then for our upper release 1 on page 12, we're going to go with Oscar Robinson. As well as for upper release 2, page 12 once again, Oscar Robinson. The reason why I chose Oscar Robinson is the release queue on these upper releases by far are the easiest to spot. Making this jumper extremely easy to time and extremely deadly. Now for our blending, release speed you want to max it out and the animation blending does not need to be touched. 
Now our next jumper is the polar opposite. I give it a five out of five in speed, but a 3.5 in greenness. So for the base, I'm going with Kevin Porter Jr. By far one of the fastest bases in the game right now. And just like the last jump shots, I'm going with release one and release two, Oscar Robinson. For our release speed, we're gonna max that out, animation blending, leave it as is. Now as y'all can see on the right side, this jump shot is extra fast. So if you mix someone up and get to that shot, trust me, they're not closing out on this. For our third and final jump shot, I give this one a 3 in speed and a 4.5 in greenness. So the base we're gonna go with on this jump shot is Stephen Curry. Now I know a lot of y'all may not have this unlocked if y'all do not meet the requirements. Y'all have to be under 6 foot 5 and you have to have at least a 91 3 point shot. And then just like our last two jump shots, we're gonna go with Oscar Robinson for the upper releases. I'm trying to tell y'all these are the best upper releases in the game. And as you can see, we got all A's. Now for our blending, you just wanna go with the release speed max and animation blending does not matter. Now that we have our jump shot picked out, now comes the fun part, learning the jump shot and tweaking settings. Now learning your jump shot is no easy task. This comes with hundreds of missed shots and sold games, unfortunately. But luckily, you guys have me and I'm gonna show you how to get used to any jump shot in less than an hour. Let's start off first with our jump shot settings. To access these settings, all you need to do is press pause, scroll over to options and quit, then go down to controller settings and find your shot timing release time. And I recommend putting this setting to early just for that fast feeling jump shot. Then honestly, I would turn off vibration just because if you get used to the release at the cue of the vibration, then 2K decides not to give you a vibration 99% of the time you're going to miss. So I recommend just turning it off completely. Next thing you wanna do, even if you don't even know your shot yet, is turn off shot meter. Learning your jump shot with no shot meter will 100% make you an elite guard. So make sure y'all doing it. Now learning your jump shot in my opinion is honestly the easiest part when you have a very smooth jump shot. All you want to do once again is go over to options, go to settings, and change your game difficulty to hall of fame. I do this because when learning your jump shot on a high difficulty, it will make it much easier to shoot when in game. So after we have done that, now we can load up the ball machine by pressing A or X. Scrolling down the ball machine, now honestly what I would do is just keep shooting until I feel 100% confident with my jumper. Now to everyone, this is honestly what I did to shoot so great. Just go on Ball Machine, Hall of Fame, and just keep shooting until I feel comfortable. If you are a regular casual 2K23 player, then there's a possibility that you may not know the meta this year for getting open shots. But this year in stage, us guards must be able to fade from the three more than dribbling into a quick stop standstill shot. Now why you may ask? Well that will be due to the contest system this year. In 2K23, contesting regular shots as a lock is probably the easiest thing of all time. Locks damn near are able to contest threes from the free throw, and that's just crazy. We're going to be going over what fade is the best for you. Then I'm going to break down a couple clips and explain how to get that fade off. Now we have two meta fades this year. We got Trey Young, my personal favorite. Then we have Stephen Curry. Now what's the best for you? Are you going to only fade corners? Then you will be using Curry. Are you going to fade more of the top of the key and around the arc? Then you're going to go with Trey Young. Now in my opinion, I believe that all y'all should be using Trey Young. Yes, you may fade the corner here and there and get a two instead of a three. Okay. But this fade is honestly so easy to time and makes it a great fade even when you're contested. Now my personal opinion with Stephen Curry, fading at the top of the key or the arc you may get weird pull-up animations and yeah honestly there's just a lot of weird animation when it comes to curry it's not always going to be that consistent oh i know i'm gonna hit this fade or yes i know i'm gonna get this animation if you're going to the corner trust me that joint gonna be deadly now I want to go over this one clip right here and show y'all exactly why I use the fade. So as you guys can see, it's a double team. I got the center on me helping out because the lockdown got hit with the screen. Now the screen is on the right side. So if I pull back left, the lock will hit the screen and get pushed to the right while I'm going to the left. As you guys can see, what I said happened, I pull back to the left and everyone runs towards the right. So if I were to stop right here to shoot a standstill shot, I probably wouldn't even have enough time to get this shot off, honestly, with how the contest system is. And he would have got a contest but instead my player has momentum and is falling back so that contest is no longer like, able to affect me at all now for the part y'all probably have all been waiting for is what are my favorite dribble moves and what dribble moves you should have on to get open easily 
Honestly, I don't change my dribble moves at all. I usually just keep the same ones and go with it. So starting off with the dribble style, we're going to go with Michael Jordan. One of the fastest dribble styles in the game. That's what you see me do all them quick combos between the legs with. Now there's a couple other dribble styles we can go with, but nothing compares to Michael Jordan. Next up for our signature size up, we're going to go with Trey Young. Now this also contributes to all the between the leg combos I do. This basically just speeds up everything into a much faster pace. For our size up escape, we're going with John Wall. This is probably the best size up escape in the game. You can also go with Kevin Durant, but like I said, I don't change my dribble moves much. So I'm sticking with John Wall. It also got the best misdirection behind the back, which is the reason why I'm using this. Now these next dribble moves, I don't have much explanation for. I just throw them on, but barely use them. But for my moving crossover, I got on James Harden. Once again, I don't use this. Moving behind the back is James Harden. Now we all love to be them Steezo dribblers sometimes, but that's not gonna cut it in stage. If y'all come to the stage doing all this spin around stuff, 100% of the time you're gonna get boxed and you're gonna lose. For when I wanna do the spin back, maybe it might work here and there. I got on basic spin, so we get the glitchy spin back. For my moving hesitation, I got on Kyrie Irving. Don't really use this much, this might accidentally happen, and I might as well just have on the best one for when it does. So I got on Kyrie. And then finally, my favorite move in the game, the Asta Slide, one of the most effective moves in the game, but this year, it can be plucked easily, so you need to know how to do it and when to do it at the correct time. Yo, YBH. If y'all are part of No Limit Gang and y'all watched me for a long time, y'all know y'all wouldn't consider me as a dribble god. Y'all would consider me a stage dribble god. I know how to get open off simple moves. Every move is going to get you open, simple combos. All these combos I'm going to teach y'all are going to get you wide open 100% of the time without being extra at all. So let's get into this. Now look y'all, we're not even going to go over any of the basics, we're going to get right into the good stuff. If y'all want to go over the basics, all you have to do, look at the top right corner and go to my first guard academy. I go over all the basics of dribbling, so y'all can go over there if you want to learn the basics first. Now for our first move by popular request is the momentum spam. So first off, how the momentum, dang my controller dirty as hell. That's how you know I play the game too much. You want to hold RT, since the ball is in our right hand, you want to flick our right stick towards the left and our left stick towards the left. After we flick our right stick, then we're going to flick our left stick. So it's going to look like this. Now look, both sticks go up diagonally towards the left when the ball is in your right hand. So when it's in your left, you want to do the same thing, but just up towards the right. This seems pretty hard, but chat, if y'all just keep doing it, it's not. Now it's pretty easy, I'll put it in slow motion so y'all can watch, but if you're spamming it, you do not want to let go of RT at all. Now it's pretty easy chat, y'all just gotta practice. Next move we're going over is the momentum snatch misdirection behind the back into a size up escape. So what we're gonna do is the momentum first, like I just showed y'all RT, so let's start off in our right hand, flick both sticks up diagonally towards the left. Then for the snatch back, you want to keep holding RT up on the right stick down on the left. Then we're gonna hit the misdirection. Since the ball is in our right hand, we're gonna flick both sticks towards each other down diagonally while holding RT. Since the ball goes over to our left hand, then we're gonna hold our, we're still gonna be holding RT and we're gonna flick up diagonally right on our right stick since the ball is in our left. Then it's gonna come out to that. While holding RT, then you're gonna run off using your left stick. Now all together, just like that now the next one is the momentum snatch into a michael jordan size up so first off we're gonna hold our t balls in our right hand we flick both sticks up diagonally towards the left once again we're gonna flick up on our right stick down on our left and for the michael jordan spam you want to let go of rt flick your stick up diagonally towards the left then back towards the right straight then down diagonally towards the left for the behind the back. So it's going to look like this all together, guys. Out of there, bro. Now the next one is the Austin slide into the 22 speed boost. So all you want to do is be holding RT, run down the court. Since the ball is in our right hand, after the Austin slide, we're going to know the ball is going to our left hand. So all you want to do is hold RT, run forward, flick down on the right stick. 
As you can see, the ball went to our left. We're going to let go of RT, flick up, and then run towards the right. Okay, now the last move I'm showing y'all today is the walk back. Like I said, I'm not showing y'all crazy dribble, steezo, spin backs and stuff. I'm going to show y'all the moves that are going to get you open 100% of the time. Now, all y'all want to do, run to one side. You want to get kind of deep, like down here. So since we're on the right side, ball is in our right hand. You want to let go of everything. Move our left stick down diagonally towards the right. So it didn't do it right there because I don't have no momentum. So if I go down here, boom. Now, if y'all watch my videos, y'all know this works almost 100% of the time. If we do it on the left, down diagonally towards the left. Y'all know this almost works every single time, bro. Now, next up, probably one of the most important aspects of being a guard are your shooting badges. Now, your shooting badges determines everything from your play style to how many shots go on the hoop. So, make sure you copy these down because these are important, bro. So, the first shooting badge we're looking at today is Agent 3's on gold. Now, as y'all learned from earlier about fading, Agent 3's is a must this year. If you're a guard, you need to be able to fade that three. So, make sure you have this on. Next up, Green Machine Silver. As in other years, y'all know it was good on bronze. It was actually the best on bronze. This year, I like to run on silver it gives me much more boost after i shoot my first green next up is volume shooter as we all know in the other 2k's volume shooter was a terrible badge and this year the more you shoot the better your percentage goes up so definitely throw this on next up i'm running amped on gold so when i run out of breath or i get tired in game i have a backup badge that's gonna save me so when i do need to shoot with low stamina next up i got guard up this rarely happens so that's why i'm running it on silver nothing higher it's when someone closes out but don't put their hands up so basically they're just playing defense in front of you and then you shoot blinders we all know what blinders is i'm running this on gold if someone comes beside me or behind me then it won't affect my shot at all but i got it on gold same thing for dead eye if someone tries to close out on me i got dead eye gold so it won't even affect me that much then limitless range this is obvious i got this on gold Next up are our playmaking badges. So the first badge I got on is Clamp Breaker on gold. Just for when a lock is bumping me around, it can kind of like shake him off a little bit. Then I got handles for days on gold. This is an obvious one. So when I'm dribbling, I don't run out of breath. Don't even need this on Hall of Fame, honestly, this year. So that's why I have it on gold and I didn't even make my player be able to get it on Hall of Fame. Mismatch Expert. So when I'm using screens and my big sets a screen and then the big man picks up, it will make it easier to blow by him so I can take that too. Then I got Quick First Step on Hall of Fame. This is an obvious one as well. Out of any dribble Move, it just gives you a huge speed boost then i got bailout on bronze so whenever i shoot a shot and if someone does successfully close out on it i will have a much higher chance of throwing out of that jump shot next up i got killer combos on gold this is just like quick chain in 2k22 it makes all your moves flow smoothly together another obvious one unpluckable on gold so that lockdowns cannot pluck me Next up, we got our finishing badges. So I got on Acrobat Silver. So if my player does end up doing a reverse or like a Euro step or something by accident. Also, spin dunks. I do a lot of spin dunks sometimes when the paint is clogged. So that's why I got on Acrobat. I got Giant Slayer. This is an obvious one. My player is 6'2". So if I go up on a big man, sometimes it might give me a contact dunk. Then I got Limitless Takeoff so I could jump from far. It's like literally unblockable. It's, it's overpowered. Then I got Slytherly on silver, fearless finisher on bronze, posterizer on silver. Now the last and final thing I want to talk about is taking the open twos. Now as all y'all know, in the past few years of 2k, the meta was, okay we're gonna force up this three, hopefully it goes in, hopefully I get open. Not in this 2k. If y'all even go down by a little bit of points, then the, the, the game is wrapped up because the amount of steals that locks can get on a guard is ridiculous and then it's near impossible to shoot wide open threes in this game, so you feel me? But what I'm saying is basically take every point you can get, if you get that rim run, get that rim run, make them think you're going for the rim run every time hit him with a walk back maybe hit him with a fade you're gonna be open okay because you got to play with the defender's mind now as you can see in these clips i made a player that could dunk y'all should have all made the same player as me my player could do everything dunk shoot dribble pass that's all you need to be able to do as a guard defense not an issue at all i'm gonna just have my lockdown guard so that's the last thing i wanted to say make sure y'all are taking y'all twos bro all right, y'all, so if y'all made this far in the video, I appreciate it a lot. These videos take forever and forever to create. Also, a lot of creativity goes into these as well. So I hope y'all enjoyed, and I would appreciate it a lot if y'all could do all three things by dropping a like on the video, leaving a comment down below what y'all thought, and last but not least, press that subscribe button because we on the road to 70K, man. We trying to hit 100K this year, man. Let's go. I love all y'all boys, man. Thank y'all for watching. Bow!